We are Lagos Talks 91.3. Let's talk. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, once again, with how do I put this? The huge clamor for the greats that we're about to speak to. I've got him on the phone. Good morning, sir. Um, good morning. Uh, I'd like to introduce to our listeners Chief Festus Adegboye Onigbinde. Um, Chief, good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, our listeners have been on our necks. They want to talk to Chief. They want to talk to Chief. They want to hear from you. They want to hear from a man who has led uh, the Super Eagles twice. Once uh, to the African the final of the African Nations Cup and secondly taking us to the uh, 2002 World Cup in Korea and Japan. So Chief, for those our younger listeners, Chief, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? You're a man of storied achievements. It, a legend, a titan, in you know, when it comes to Nigerian football. Can you just, you know, just take us down memory lane a little bit before we get into the nitty-gritty of the interview? And then, sorry, Chief, in the in the studio, I have um, uh, uh, Adwa Yeni, I have Femi Faraway, and I have Dubno Di Okunta as well, who would like to fire questions. And for our listeners, please, if you have questions for Chief Odibide, you can send them to our WhatsApp, and we'll ask him the question. Go ahead, Chief. Thank you very much. One has been in football for some time. And um, I was a football player, which many people did not believe. Some people even said I never thought football in my life. <laughs> but when I showed some of my photographs, the first football coaching course that was uh, officially organized in Nigeria was in 1961 in Nevada. And um, the then national coach, Beth Halevi and Mr. Lee conducted the course. Uh, we were there, over 20 of us, including some big names in Nigerian football like uh, Amosha Shiku, Ayuadeniji, the Longer Brothers, etc. Et um, <clears throat> some of us succeeded in obtaining our coaching certificate. That is um, our I eventually got into coaching after playing. I was the captain of my uh, St. Luke's Teacher Training College team in 1961. Wow. So, I just left again. So, <coughs> and um, I was a school teacher, a classroom teacher. I taught in primary, secondary teacher training institutions for 20 years before I became a full time. Football coach in 1974, I okay? think. So, and then uh, since then, uh, in coaching my coaching career, um, I joined the Western Regional Sports Council in 1974, as I said. And I've handled teams like um, Water Corporation. I've been in 3SC, what we now call, I changed the name to 3SC, it used to be WNDC. Uh, I have been in that team seven times. Mm. Anytime, anytime the team had some problem, some people will remember who they are, and I will be brought in, and then as soon as the thing, you know, begins to the problem begins to simmer. Some people will find excuses, and before they know what was happening, I will, I will, I will just turn my back. So that led me into coaching the national team in 1983. There was another thing. Nigeria wanted to see if there was any Nigerian coach who could do the job, who could handle the national team. The advertisement was placed. Uh, over 60 of us applied, and I eventually emerged as the, the best. And so I was the national team, then playing a bush from 1983 to 1985. I took the team to the African Cup of Nations final in Cote d'Ivoire in 1984. And, um, well, as usual with Nigerians, when you don't think along their own line, you are in trouble. And what is blind? And up to now, people will say, if you bring the buy in, you will not allow us to chop. They are ch 
stop his stealing. And uh, I have made up my mind I will never be involved in things that are not straight forward. So, after winning silver at the African Cup of Nations in 1984, uh, some problems started. Actually, the final against Cameroon was sab sabotaged by some prominent Nigerians. I will have come back with gold. When there is a time, the time, when, when the time is appropriate to explain all those, I will. So eventually I left the team. And then, came 2002. Nigeria was going for the World Cup. And then I was brought in again. Uh, I had less than six months to prepare the team for the World Cup in, in Korea, Japan. The normal thing is that immediately one World Cup ends, you start preparing for the next one in four years. But instead of spending four years to prepare the team, I had six months, barely six months. I came in in March, and uh, the competition was in June 2002. Another problem I had was that um, before then, the team had a big problem. The national team had a big problem. All the big names in the team abandoned the team and they said they were not going to come back to the national team. So I had to go out to look for fresh players. Young players. And that was how I started uh, building the team for Korea Japan. All the big names abandoned. They said they were not coming back because they had a disagreement at an international competition a year earlier. So I prepared the team, and uh, during the preparatory period, I played seven friendly matches, won five of them, and drew two. So I was sure my team was ready. But then, when it came to getting to go to Korea, Japan, people brought the pressure on me, and that was the greatest mistake in my coaching career. And I succumbed into taking some of these big names back into the team. Mm. Yeah, after all those preparatory matches, where the boys did very well. And when we got to Korea, Japan, it was uh, one or two of these big names that actually sabotaged us, especially the match against Argentina. That was our fault here. Some key defenders, Walt Batistusa, had the ball into my net from a corner kick. And so we lost 0 1 to Argentina. In the second game, I think against um, what team there? Sweden. Sweden. Well, I think I've got a group of Sweden here. Yes, Sweden. 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 In the second game against Sweden, it was this same player who gave Sweden their two goals. We were leading 2-0. Mm -hmm. They gave the, 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 the Swedish team the two goals, which, which, which mm -hmm. they, they, they leveled off in us. Was it was was it one zero or two zero, Chief? One zero. It was uh, one zero. I think I think we lost the game now. We know losing. Ilya Sagawa opening goal. There, oh, okay. We're well, leading one one zero, Chief. I think we lost the game two one. Yeah. It was a penalty. Yes, I think so. I think so. Uh -huh. Well, it's some time now. I know. It's so, really <laughs> and that was why in our game, in our third game against England, I changed the whole team. I removed those old hands. And brought back my young boys. That was uh, this is uh, Yamal's first big game, and I brought in some other young young boys. I will play the draw against England. Draw against England, and um, I knew then that if I had used those boys against the first two teams we played against, probably would have gotten to the final of that competition. Oh. But I don't leave on regrets. I don't live on regrets. That is gone and gone. So I I changed the whole team. I came back to my my, my, my young boys and uh, we did beautifully well against England. At the final whistle, the man who was handling the English team, Ericsson, ran to me and hugged me at this beautiful game. And in fact, it was a FIFA's uh, uh, record that it was one of the best matches in the competition. Anyway, that is gone and gone. And that was how it was. And um, at a point, even before then, 
there was this junior world cup matches uh, uh, competition in malaysia and the overall chairman the man in power in west indies not only in west cities was fifa first vice president vice president to black black to blatter he was heading our zone in that competition in malaysia and then one evening he called a dinner i didn't know it was deliberately done because of me and at the dinner he said uh, chief if nigerians have coaches like you why do they go to europe looking for coaches i just looked at him and might in about 15 minutes said, chief tell me why you will not come to trinidad and to be go to help us i kept quiet again and uh, we left the dinner less than two hours after leaving the dinner table i got a letter of appointment from trinidad and to be go mm. and he said he wanted immediate response so i started dodging him when we finished our uh, uh, zona level we went to Kuala Lumpur, the capital and i just got a phone call from blatter who wanted to see me immediately i was afraid what was happening then i got to his room and i said chief I was, and I was, um, uh, this man, the man from Trinidad and Tobago, uh, Jack Warner. Jack Warner told me he wanted you to come and help their football. He looked at my face, it was sour. He said, okay, chief, chief, don't worry. Regard it as part of FIFA development program. And I was on FIFA technical and development committee. So he hooked me up. He looked at the face again, not smiling. He said, okay, chief, you know what we do. We will send you to that area for two months. When you are there, study the situation and take a decision. That was how I ended up in uh, Trinidad and Tobago from October to November of that year. And as soon as I landed, I went to... Uh, my friend and he said uh, chief you are welcome he gave me an envelope i think i thought it was uh, filled with a uh, dollar he said uh, that is the contract <laughs> as you go around in the next two months study make your input and when you come back we'll, 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 we'll sign the contract in Trinidad and Tobago, they had over 30 islands scattered all over Central America. I was hopping from one island to another in two months. I made my input and when I came back, I told uh, the owner, this is the contract. After two days, I didn't hear anything from him. I now went to him and said, Jack, what, what is happening? When are we talking about this uh, contract? He said, talk about what? I've read everything you have put in and I agree. Sit and let us sign. My brother, that was how, how I ended up signing a three-year contract in Trinidad and Tobago. Wow. So, and uh, the Junior World Cup to be hosted by Trinidad and Tobago was to be in 2001. And that was 1998. So I had to start building a team. So I started, I said 2001, get me boys under 14. So they got them together and I started. After about six months of training, in fact, not up to six months, these boys, these under 14 boys under who are now moving into under 15, were having a talk even senior teams tough time and i knew the team was getting ready uh, as the things went on and again some nigerians now stepped in and they created a problem between jack Warner and myself so i had to leave after about two years 
it, this was a deliberate thing. And uh, the, the details will be explained later. But it was started by Nigerians, created by Nigerians. You know, Chief. And so, yeah, okay. Sorry to yes. jump in, Chief, but the, the truth, we are constrained for time. But and I'm sure oh, my colleagues. Sorry, 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 sorry. It's all, it's all right, yeah. Chief. We're, we're really enjoying the story, to be honest with you. But going back to the 2002 okay. World Cup, uh, are you prepared to name names of those p particular players that caused issues for you there? That you felt sabotaged? The, 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 your, your, yeah, the I would advise you to do is this. Look for the theme of the match between Nigeria and Argentina. Hmm. Go through the video and you'll be able to decide on yourself. All right. I'm not going to name any names. All right. Um, good morning, Chief. In a book published, uh, I think it was this year, late late last year, this year, by um, former captain of the Super League, Gusonne Olise, he mentioned yes. that you gave him a call prior to the start of the FIFA World Cup in 2002. Is there any truth in that? That what? You gave him a call inviting him to the national team ahead of the World yes. Cup. Yes, <laughs> that, that's a funny aspect. There was a day after being appointed, I was with the then Minister for Sports. And then somebody brought a note to him. He read the note and passed it on to me. The content was that all those big players who had quarrel with the NFL said any one of them invited will not come. That they will not come to the team. In about 10 minutes, they brought another note. They read it and passed it on to me. And the content was that every one of them who came was coming to sabotage. And that was what happened. That was what I was referring to. That was what happened in Korea, Japan. And eventually, some of them pressurized me to take them into the team. So most of them decided they would not come. And uh, the, the, the three of all of them who agreed to to come some of them some uh, some of these uh, those who agreed to come did fit beautifully well like uh we say uh um, my friend they did well but we had one or two who came to sabotage as contained in the note sent to the minister all right so that was what happened you also spoke about some challenges in terms of management um from above is it administrators or was it from the government in 1984 and in 2002? Now, let me make a confirmation here. The major problem with Nigerian football is not technical. It is administrative. Administrative problems. So, administrative from the NFF? Yes, from the NFF. The NFF then. Yes. Right from NFF to NFF. The major, up to today, the major problem with Nigerian football is administrative, not technical. What am I saying? My assignment with FIFA for over 20 years, CAF for over 25 years, have taken me to more than 40 countries in Africa alone. I have touched almost all the continents of the world. And I want to say categorically here that I did not see a country that is better endowed than Nigeria in football talent. The talents are there. But for how long have I been talking about a, 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 a developmental program? Do we have one up to now? Yeah. And in FIFA statutes, Article 2, which deals with objectives, why are you running football? The opening reason reach to improve the game of football constantly. To improve the game of football constantly. That is the first objective. What are we doing to improve the game of football in Nigeria? Any meaningful developmental program? All we do is organize competition, competition, competition. It's like a teacher. A teacher setting up examinations on topics he has not taught the, 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 his pupils. That's what we are doing. Competitions in football and in sport generally are supposed to serve the same purpose as examinations in schools. The set examinations of what we have taught. Right, I told you I was a school teacher for over 20 years. Um, 
Chief, the last yeah. question for me, please. You've you've been around the corridors of Nigerian football for a very long time. You mentioned the Nations Cup yeah. in '84, Shooting Stars Football Club. You've been around the Super Eagles. Who yeah. has been the greatest footballer you have coached over those years? The one player that you were marvelled by what he could do with the football. There are many of them. I cannot be counting them. But the one you love so much. I love all my players. <laughs> including those who sabotage me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> I told you, I've been to several countries all over the world. I don't have one single enemy. Not one enemy. I don't transfer people's negative thinking into my own brain. I want to enjoy my life, and, and that is why I'm still as healthy as I am at 84. Well, Chief, you, you sound real good, but one thing I'm going to hand over to Dumnon de Okota, and he has, he has a question for you. But one thing I want to say, yeah. what I want to say is a statement, not a question. One of the best teams to represent Nigeria for me was the 84 um, AFCON finalists because they were so young. That was Stephen Keshi's first international uh, competition. And he was brilliant. Uh, Stephen Kesha, they were additional. I can't remember the other, but it was a wonderful team. And I get it through to the final was a marvelous achievement on your on on based on you and the performance of those boys. Unfortunately, I think we lost to a vastly more experienced Cameroonian side, but that was a wonderful side to behold. I must have told well done Chief, for that. I've been waiting a long time to tell you that. Please hold on for do not he has a question for you. Thank you. Yeah, Chief, good morning, sir. Morning. Morning. Um, you mentioned that um, the problem of Nigerian football is administrative, not technical. Um, I can say that 1,000 times. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, can you limit it to when you were general manager of Shooting Stars? Uh, I know you, ma- you managed that club at one point, and Shooting Stars being one of the elite clubs in Nigeria, who did the, an old club, it's a, it's a legacy club. But it's not as it seems these days. Um, I don't know. What do you think are the major problems of club football in Nigeria? Administration. Administration, that's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Chief. Um, we're going to let you go shortly, but remember when, when, when I called you to, uh, you know, to sell this interview to you, I know you were reluctant to come, and I'm really grateful you did. Um, you spoke about a plan you had for local government football. Could you just share that uh, with our with our listeners, please? I have been placed outside Nigerian Football Administration, so I don't want to confuse people who are there now. Let them think what they want to do. But the example I was giving you was this. I was saying, I have written papers on this, and the papers are there on my system. That we can use football alone, not to talk of other sports. The International Olympic Committee approves of more than 40 sports. Let's talk about football now. If Nigeria is serious with football, and we said, okay, we want to go into meaningful developmental program. We start from the grassroots. Let's say, okay, each local government in Nigeria <coughs> should have a football team in each category. You know, we have about five categories, under 12, under whatever, and so on and so forth. In one sex alone, then we two have two sexes, male and female, which means 10 teams. If each local government has teams, 10 teams in football, each team will take care of 30, at least 30 players, 30 times 10. That is... 300. How many local governments are in Nigeria? Now you can now imagine how many young boys and girls we are taking off the street. The government may have to, to sack policemen because they have no, they don't have young men to run, to, to, to run after on the street. That's one thing. Now let's look at it from another practical angle. If we encourage sports in schools, a boy leaves the classroom at 2 o'clock, the coach says, or the girls writer says, come for football training at 4 o'clock. His mother will have to beg him to take his lunch. His mind will be on that football uh, training. And he will be there for about two hours. 
By the time he comes home, back home at 6 30, his mother will also have to beg him to take his dinner. The next thing he wants to do is to sleep. Where will you find him running on the street, breaking glasses and all the rest of it? Multiply that by the number of local governments you have. We have I think we have about 133 local governments or so. So, what are we doing? But are we developing football? We have not even developed the developers. Mm. <laughs> we don't have effective coaching program for our coaches. I was with FIFA for 20 years, developing football all over the world. Some of the countries where I established developmental program in Africa are now giving Nigeria a big headache in football. So, but are we using all these advantages? Okay, welcome back. Sports Zone right here on Legal Stocks 91.3. We'll be taking some of your thoughts on WhatsApp, uh, Twitter messages for Chief Adeboye Onibinde, former Super Eagles coach, former general manager of Shooting Stars Football Club. Ah, uh, I'm not shoot, uh, Shooting Stars in the uh, cup competition. It was also a memorable period for Shooting Stars back in the day. Yeah, I think, um, I, I don't know whether Chief was in charge when Shooting Stars got yes, to the was. final. He was. Uh, 1984. He was. Adebayo was injured in he that was, game. Yeah. Could, ah, it was sad. It must, it must have been a very tough year for him. Losing two finals in that year. Mm, the mm, cup competition mm, and mm. the Nations Cup. What, what I, I'm, try, I'm trying to get him back on the phone. But what I'd really loved, I'd love to know the... Okay, let me, let me, let me check it up. Google it. The 84 squad. The, that team that... that was it, Nations uh, 84 Nations they were, they were brilliant. And that was when Keshi really... If I'm not mistaken, Keshi was a captain. He was young. He was. He was captain uh, in '84. I think he was. I think he was. Well, that's, that's, cheap. that's a difficult one. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's go through some of your messages uh, before. So Keshi was in that team. Yes, there was Peter Rufai in that team. Can you imagine? Um, Isasho Fulua, Rodasho Lawal, Patrick Okala, Clement Emile, Ademola Adishino, Henry was Rashidi Yakini, Bala Ali. Mm. I remember our loop particularly well. Yeah, those, those were some of the notable names I can pick out. Hello, Chief. Oh, thank you. We got you back on yeah. the f- on the phone. All right, Chief. Oh. I know we're taking it, but please, Chief, can you tell us a little bit more, more about the eighty-four? Who was the, your captain in eighty-four? Um, late Stephen Kershaw. Wow, yeah, I That's, said so. It was a wonderful team, uh, and uh, you know, uh, I, you know, Femi Farawe asked you a question, which I feel that you you dodged. But for me, Chief, I was going to answer for you about one of your best players. And I've said Buddha Shiro Lawal, who was in that team as well. You know? Uh, for me, if I was going to, if, without being biased for my own generation, if I was going to pick my best Nigerian player of all time. But what's your take on it, Chief? Give us, Chief, try now. Get off the fence and give us, you know, at least two or three of your best Nigerian players I've ever played for you. Now, I want you to understand one thing. Football is a team game. Yes, sir. Aha. Uh-huh. And um, everybody in the team is important. Although as individuals, psychologically, everybody has body has his own traits. A boy may be good. Hello. Uh, yes, we are well we, we can listen uh-huh. to yeah. There are about seven areas of football fitness in players. Starting from psychological fitness. Mm. Your best striker, you have a match at 4 o'clock. Your best striker got a letter from his girlfriend at 12 noon, sacking him. Mm. Will he be at a good frame of mind? And just giving, or he got a letter for his landlord invited him and ejected him from his house. Mm. And that is why every coach must be very conversant with his player to know when they have these type of problems and know how to talk them out of it. For instance, you see your, your best striker, very moody. Now, oh, John, what is wrong with you? We are not looking fine. If he has enough confidence in you, if you have been relating well with him, he will come out and tell you, uh, Koshi, it is that girlfriend of mine. You know, you used to come here to watch our trainer. He did this and that. I don't say that, John, is that why you are moody? Did you notice that some, some girls came to watch our training last week? Some of them we are looking for you or uh, apart from that okay we look for somebody else. I mean you are already doing your job as a coach mm. improving his psychological fitness so that's chief, one 
Okay. Yes? Then you go into it will go into physiological fitness. Physiologically, you see fit, can it run? You see fast. You see flexible and so on and so forth. So and not a single, not one single player can have all these things. All right, chief. In church, I don't need to answer that question. Yeah, then you then you talk about intellectual fitness. If there are problems during a match, is he intelligent enough to adjust? Is it every player that can do that? Before you now go into technical fitness, tactical fitness. In all the areas. All right, chief. Thank you. All right, um, we have one or two yeah. questions from our listeners. We'll take that and then we'll we'll let you go. Okay, so um, chief, this is the question is from Top of Ferrari. If you so much believed in your local coaches, why were you involved in the panel that appointed Tiles Liberates for the Super Eagles? I, I don't get that right. Um. There was a Tiles Liberal who was, according to Top of Ferrari, he's saying, if you believe so much in our local coaches, why were you involved in the panel that appointed Tiles Liberate for the Super Eagles? Appointed who? Tiles Liberate. I don't know. I don't know who is. I don't know who is. Look, um, you have said it right. I remember I said it earlier on. In 1983, Nigeria, the Nigerian federal government wanted to see if there was a Nigerian who could do the job. And I believe I didn't disappoint them. It's only because the only intelligent coach in Nigeria. What are we doing to discover others and develop them? The first thing is to discover, then develop. That's what I was saying about the developmental program. Okay, there's a second question. That's why. So I would I, I I cannot remember being directly involved in the employment of a foreign coach in this country. No. Country. no. Okay. Uh, there's a question here from Oswa Bishop. Says the uh, interview is quite revealing. Um, if the coach alleged his securing the gold was a sabotage by big wigs, that's talking about the eighty four eighty four team. Why did he take the job for no? Why did he take the job for no competition? That's in the two thousand and two. If you know, it says that if you know I was sabotaged in 1984. Right? 1984, yes. Right, so why did you come back to the Super Eagles later on, knowing that the same people are still in the corridors of Nigerian football? Be, 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 because, because I am a Nigerian, and I want to do whatever I can to help my country. All right, last question here. I told you, listen, listen, I told you I was in shooting stars seven times. And there was not one of these seven times that I was removed because I was not performing. My major Nigerians, generally, at national level, even up to my local level, they will say, if you bring Baba in, you will not allow us to chop. Is that their chop? <laughs> and I can't be involved in it. Okay, sir. Well, seven times. I've been in shooting stars seven times. All right, sir. So the last question we can squeeze in today says, um, it's decades now, and you say when the time is right, you'll reveal those responsible. So when is the time that you reveal this information? Well, <laughs> we'll come back to the same issue. Some years ago, some top journalists in Nigeria, sports journalists in Nigeria, came around and they convinced me that they were going to write my biography. They wrote it over 200 pages. Some people sat on it up to today. That has not been published. I still have the script. Because they believe, some years ago, if you let me say a few years ago, I started a football academy in a university in Ebola here. Hey man, how can I be going through all these uh, sabotage, sabotage all, all, all the time? And I thank God for giving me the life he has given me and the head he has given me. Amen. Nigeria is not only in sports, in politics. Are Nigerians interested in the truth? <laughs> so, uh, I do feel that you cannot... Do it. I, 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 I cannot. I cannot say it exactly, uh, except exactly as it is. Mm. That's my problem in Nigeria. 
Well, uh, Chief Festus Adigbe Onigbinde, we'd like to thank you on behalf of all our listeners worldwide and the crew in the studio. I'd like to thank you so much for coming on this morning. And Chief, please, I'm going to ask you for a favor. We will, we will call on you again, definitely, because we appreciate everything you have done for this country, especially the Nara 1984 If I may put in there. Yes, sir. Because I want to emphasize the need for developmental program. The yes, developmental sir. program I started at Trinidad and Tobago. Eight years later, Trinidad and Tobago, for the first time in their life, qualified for the finals of the World Cup. Wow. As a result of that developmental program. It's a gradual thing, but it has to be objective. Mm. They qualified for the World Cup for the first and only time in their life, eight years after it started. Mm. Thank you. All right, Chief. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank All you. Right. All right, Chief. Wish you the best. We are Lagos Talks 91.3. Let's talk.